All right. I drew up a design for a sweater for my cousin. What you need to do is make one, two, three, four rectangles. Measure your person's circumference. Measure the length. Measure their neck hole. And then the circumference of the armhole or the diameter. Whichever one means all the way around. And then you make panels that are like this. See the rectangle? 28 by 24, 14 by 30, 23. And then you add an inch for the sewing in on. Because when you sew it together, it takes up some time. But we're going to be making that. Well, I'm going to show you how I make that in the following videos. What video? And it's going to be one video that I smudged together. <laughs> but it's corner to corner stitch. And I made rectangles of fabric. And then we're going to stitch them together. together. But this is the start of the sleeve. I used this small three millimeter hook, which you can't see because it rubbed off. Oh wow. Well, the three millimeter hook because I didn't want huge holes in the project. Holes are good, but not huge holes. But, anyways, come with me on this journey as we crochet a sweater together. And stay crafty. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Hello. I'm going to show you how to make a corner to corner sweater. First, you start with your yarn. Then you make a slip knot. And then you chain six. See if I can get closer. Chain six. Ah, ah. Well, darn it. If I could get the chain to work. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then in the fourth chain, which I marked off from the, the hook, you do a double crochet. Oh, this is hard to do. You do a double crochet. One. If my rope would stop it. Two. Three. And then you double crochet in the next two chains. Get it? Two chains? Aha, aha. One. Two, one. Oh, it's three chains. Two. Two. Let's see if that's the right amount. Because this chain one 
the chain that you skip counts as one, two, three, four. So that's four of them. Now to get it to go again or to keep going to expect that's one row, row one. Now to get it to keep going, you chain I think six more. And then you chain oh, let me look it up. Hold up. Alright, I figured it out. You chain six. I cheated. I YouTubed it. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, and then from the fourth end, you put a double crochet. One, Two, three, that's one. And then you put in two more double crochets. One, two, Two and one, two, three. Now, now it should look something like this. What you do is you flip it, flip it good. You flip it. And then you go in the loop, the chains, the space that makes the loop, you know, the chain three. Uh, if this isn't making sense, there's plenty of YouTube videos on how to do this, but, but there it is. And then you single slip stitch and then you chain your chains. And then you chain a double crochet. One, three double crochets in that loop. Two, three. That's three double crochets. And then that chain one, well, that chain three. And that's row two. And it should look something like this. Now you keep increasing, which means chain six, chain six, and then double crochet on each way until you get to the size you want, which in my case, I'm making the sleeves for the sweater. Ta -ta -ta. So I'll come back when I've made it to size that I need to stop increasing. Okay? Okay. Alright, let's get a better look at that. To increase on each side, you chain six. Two, three, four, five, six, oops, and then you double crochet into the fourth chain, one, two, three, and then you double crochet into the second chain, three, and then you double crochet again, Sorry about that. One, two, three. That is, that makes one chain and three double crochets. And then you flip it, flip it good. 
roll it up and then you see this the last chain you loop it through there and you slip stitch it and then you double crochet no chain three two three and then you double crochet three one you chain three then you double crochet three this is how you work back and forth That's two, and that's three. Well, this is going to be three. And then you slip stitch into the next chain space. Slip stitch. Got my yarn stuck on my ball winder. Ah! Ah! It's stuck. Okay, there we go. Okay, we slip stitched. Now we chain three. If I could keep my yarn on the hook. One, two, three, and then we double crochet three times in the same loop. Chain three loop, two, one, two, three, and then we slip stitch into the chain space uh oh I lost it that's okay it can be picked up again why are you focusing on the blinds there we go slip stitch Again, if I'd quit dropping the loops, slip stitch, and then double crochet, oh, chain three, two, three, and then three double crochets, one, Undo. Retry. The struggle's real. That's three. And then you slip stitch. And chain three. Two. Three. And then you three double crochets. One. Two. Is that three? One, two, three. Yep, that's three. 
and then the carry on or increase you chain six you chain six and then you double crochet in the fourth chain from the loop then you double crochet in the second and the third or the fourth the fifth and the sixth and then you connect it and you keep going until you get the size rectangle you want and when I do you see how small it is I gotta make a size 14 inch by something rectangle I'll be back to show you if this camera would focus there we go that's the size rectangle that I got right now and you see it's corner to corner but I'll be back and I'll show you how to decrease all right I'm back at it although for you it will be like a blinking time literally I have made it to the size that I needed to be on one side oh I gotta back up so now I stop increasing let me show you how to stop increasing to increase you would chain three and then continue on but I'm not going to continue on because that'd make it bit that'll make it too big so I'm going to stop increasing and to do that you just connect let me undo what I did see you just connect the loop oh, well I can't do it backwards I apologize but you single or you slip stitch and then you flip your work and then you get your yarn untangled and then you slip stitch slip stitch slip stitch <laughs> And ta-da! You have stopped increasing. See? And then you chain three and carry on like you normally would. Three. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> Hair's a mess. It's okay. You chain three. Double crochet three times. Double crochet three, three. T Let me double check. That's three times, yep. And then you slip stitch. And do you see where I'm slipping the stitch into? It's into this loop, which is the chain three. Oh, you can't see my nails in the way. This loop, which is the chain three from the previous row. <clears throat> but you slip it slip it good into there slip stitch and then you chain three two three and then you double crochet three two and three And then you, you can't see what I'm doing. You slip it into the next chain three loop. And you see right here, that's the chain three loop that we made. But yeah, let me show you how to measure too. Oh, sorry about the wiggle. <laughs> but to measure your corner to corner, I pulled the loop out, or the hook out. You get your measuring tape all situated. Wrong way. Nope, right way. Situated. You grab your corner. Bloop. And then you measure from the corner down to however long you want it to be to the tip. From the corner all the way down to the tip 
which in this case is 17-ish inches long. <laughs> That's going to be the long side, and this is going to be the short side. Then you grab your corner again and measure down to the other corner, well, the other tip. Oh, oh my. It's a bit longer than it should be, but it's okay. So one side's 17, one side's 18. Whoops. <laughs> Should have stopped at 16 and a half, but it's okay. The problem is with this type of Chanel yarn, if you try to undo it, it'll get all snagged and then it'll start peeling the fuzz off. Yeah, it'll start peeling the fuzz off, so I can't undo what I've done with this type of yarn. And I'm not cutting, and I'm not a frogger, so one sleeve might just be a bit baggier than the other sleeve. Or I could stitch it so that when I fold it around and connect it at the bottom, I could stitch it so that it bunches up and accounts for that extra girth that I put in there. <laughs> but you'll see when I get done. But that's how to decrease... Oh, to stop your sides from getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Bigger and bigger and bigger. It stops your sizes from increasing, so we just call it a decrease. Or corner to corner crochet. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse the coughing. But just to go over it again. We make a... Slip knot, Ta -da! and then we chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then the fourth one down. One, two, three, four. We double crochet. One, two, three, and then we double crochet again in the second chain. One, two, three, and then we double crochet in the third chain. One, two, three, and that's a chain, our first row of corner to corner. And then we chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six, <clears throat> and then we chain into the fourth one, double crochet into the fourth one, two, three. The second one, we double crochet in. One, uh oh, one, two, three, and then in the third one, we double crochet in. One, two, three, and then we flip this one and single crochet, slip stitch into that, that loop, that chain three loop at the end. Do you see it? 
and then we chain one, two, three, chain three, and then double crochet three times in that chain loop. One, two, whoops. three <clears throat> and then do extend it again we chain six one two three four five six and then in the fourth chain down one two three four or the third chain up however you want to look at it we double crochet one two three and then in the second chain we double crochet one two three and then the third chain we double crochet one two three and then we kind of flip it and then in that chain loop you see what I'm talking about that loop we slip stitch and then chain three whoop, 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 got my yarn all tangled up and then we double crochet three times one two one one two two one, two, three, and then we slip stitch into the chain space, and then chain three again. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Is that three? Yeah, that's three. Okay. And that's how we make. I gotta straighten it out a little bit or it'll grow crooked. And that's how we do the double crochets and the, the chain threes and the chain sixes to make a corner to corner. Just to re-show you, because I didn't think you could see what I was doing the first time. Okay, now that I've got the sleeves and the front and the back done, I'm going to show you how I connect them all. Hopefully, it will be in camera view. You slip out your yarn onto it. We're going to, I'm going to do a crochet closure, a single crochet stitch. See, I've pinned it off so that the seams are touching. I you know that's kind of, I tried blocking it, but it didn't help much. So the last one I said, forget it. Since it didn't do much, why do it in the first place? So we attach the yarn to our hook. After we make a slip knot, and then we insert it into the very first hole or stitch or whatever, and then you pull it through. Yarn over, pull it through. Yarn over, pull it through. One, nope, two. Slip stitch. Yarn over and pull it through all two loops on the hook. Okay, having a hard time. There we go. Mm. 
So what I'm trying to do is wrap the tails around the yarn and yarn them through at the same time. There we go. That way I ain't got to weave in so many tails. But anyways, so yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through all two loops on the hook. Moved. These fancy little clips are fun. I found them in a magazine. They came with the magazine. And they're cool. They're used to hold your stuff together while you stitch it. Anyways, insert hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. And then yarn over and pull up through both loops on the hook. There we go. Nope. Nope. Anyways. <sighs> Try this again. Insert. Yarn over, pull up. And yarn over, pull up through two. Insert through both layers of fabric. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Insert hook through both layers of fabric, yarn over, yarn over and pull through two. And you're gonna do this all the way down until you reach the end. Let me reach the end. All right, I'm near the end. See that? Got that little bit left to go. What we do is take out the, the pattern holder. And keeping the both sides together, we yarn over. And then keep on going still. Uh-oh. To the end where we take the tail and pinch it together with the other one and continue to grab both strings so we have less to stitch in at the end and it'd be great if you had uh, your stitches evenly spread out kind of like I do And then once you reach the end, you yarn over, you pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, and do it one more time just to be safe. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through that little bitty loop, and then pull a long tail out. Yeah. And fasten off. And you've done, put your sides together. To make a sleeve, see? Now this is what I call the wrong side because it has the seam sticking out. You see the seam? But when you you leave everything wrong side out or seam side out until you're done. But what's left is to put it all back together. Now that these are sewn together, I gotta find a way to attach the sleeves to the body pieces, but I think what I'm going to do is just start at one end, stitch up, well I could measure, but that requires measuring. <laughs> so I'll just play it by eyeball, but yeah, where did that third one go? I know it fell on the floor because I heard it tingling, -ling. but yeah, this is the body piece. I blocked it, but it's still crooked as crap, <laughs> so it's just going to have to be crooked as crap, 
it all gets straightened out when I put a seam around everything. And then I uh, put the, the cuffs and the rough ridges on. He wants black and white ridges for the cuff and the, the ribbing around the torso. But when I get to that, I'll record that. But that's how you seam the sleeves together. I'm just going to explain how you uh, seam the body and the arms together. Well, basically, you take this and you find a way to pin it on at the very top because that's where the sleeve is going to go. The sleeve is going to attach like so. And as you seam up the side, like so, as you seam up the side, you will seam around the sleeve, around the sleeve, with one side of the fabric to one side of the sleeve. And then the middle, of course, is connecting all two, three pieces. And then down the other side, on the other flap of fabric. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I'll be able to show it to you when I get it all put together. And then we can move on to the ribbing and the patches. All right. Thank you. All right. Hey, I've got one side done. Now I got to do the other side. We start with our slip knot on the ring. And then we proceed to give it what it needs, which in this case is a sperm beading. Now, you go through the front and the back panels, and then you proceed to single crochet through both thicknesses all the way up and around the sleeve. See? Like so. Oh. Let's hide the junk on the floor. <laughs> Which is actually books and yarn. But anyways, go through both thicknesses. Both thicknesses. Single crochet. And I like to crochet my tail in as I go. which that was more like a slip knot, but it's okay. Single crochet. Line up your edges. Ooh, curl them edges. And single crochet up the sleeve. Or up the... Up the, uh... The side. <laughs> It's going to take a while. I don't know how you fast forward record, but we're going to do this together. Single crochet. And there you go. Your two pieces are together. What is, why is this stuck? Okay. Now what I did was I pinned down the sides and then I pinned down the sleeve, but I spread it open and pinned one side of the sleeve down and then pinned it down and pinned the other side of the sleeve down to the other front pieces of fabric. One front side of the sleeve is pinned down to the front side of the shirt and the back side of the sleeve is pinned down to the back side of the fabric or the shirt <coughs> 
and then we move the clippy out of the way as we get to it. Ooh, they're setting off fireworks already. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. I need to make sure it's all lined up. All the way up we go. As usual, I'm having problems with this tiny hook grabbing this fluffy yarn. I think you've got the idea by now. <laughs> and someone came to say hello. Someone with four legs and a long tail. Who knows he shouldn't be in here right now. <laughs> you hear him dragging his feet. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Oh, we made it to the next clippy. Oh, someone caught something on fire. I can hear the fire truck. <laughs> Come on. And I'll pause now to show you, well, heck, I might as well continue on just to show you how to get around the sleeve. Uh -huh. Let's carry on. My wayward son, don't you cry no more. <laughs> Dropped it. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Alright, we're almost to the sleeve. <sighs> so how's your Christmas? <laughs> how's your New Year's? Any new plans? I have absolutely no plans for New Year's, which is tonight. That's how long this video is taking to make. 
Christmas, I went and saw family in Missouri. That was great. And then I got to see the caves in Missouri. Some of the caves. Two of the caves, to be specific. The Bridal Cave and Jacob's Cave. Oh, dropped it again. Did I grab it? Oh, yep, I grabbed it. <clears throat> See, we're almost to the sleeve. Almost to the sleeve. Well, I'm almost to the sleeve. If you're following along, you should be almost to the sleeve too, because I would assume you wouldn't have as many mistakes or drops as I've been having. Ooh, too far. Mistake. Miss Sticky Sticky Steak. <laughs> oh. There we go. Did you see that? That's how you get the uh, start of the sleeve. You just pick up one side of the sleeve, hopefully near or close enough to near to the middle seam. And I put my seams facing the bottom of the sweater for the sleeves. And then you just take it and pinch it and crochet it away it. Making sure you're not crocheting everything together. But we crochet through two layers. The fronts of the sleeve. And then you work your way up to the top of the sleeve. Oh, my fireworks. <laughs> Why are they shooting them off so early? It's only like 6 p.m. I guess they got to go to work. Well, they got other parties to attend. Well, that wasn't a single crochet. That was a slip stitch. Now it's just a single crochet. What are you sniffing around for? <laughs> Booty head number one, booty head number two. <laughs> you can see his tail. <laughs> All right. And you got to kind of keep them separated as you work your way around.
And now we're almost at the top. Almost at the top. Where it's going to be interesting because technically you have to sew three together. The front, the back, and the sleeve. I think the single crochet is a stronger stitch versus the... Uh, regular old yarning needle plus you don't have to measure out the yarn it just flows with it so it it'll always be enough yarn getting close to the top see that that's the top and that's where I'm gonna have to take this one out because it's in the way of grabbing hold of all three of these and conveniently all three of these have a string or a tail I should say That was hard. <laughs> Move this one out of the way. Grab all three of these again. And now we're working our way back down the sleeve. Which is still interesting because I still have the top. So I still have to go through three layers of fabric. Uh oh, got it tangled up. Hold up. Gonna have to wait till I finish recording. won't be much longer because this is all that's left yay see what I'm talking about see how the seam is facing the bottom part of the sweater all right I'll call her back but yeah now to stitch and this is what I mean by holding it separate so that you don't stitch the front and back to the back or the front and back to the front. Whichever. And then take the pinchy off and carry on down the line. Oops.
Don't you cry no more. To make sure I seamed it all the way good. Nope, missed this spot. There we go. And then chain one. To... And there we go. Sleeves are seamed together. Yeah. yeah. Now I got to do the neck hole. Because <laughs> that is just ludicrous big. That's the neck hole. But yeah, there we go. The sweater is looking like a sweater. Da -da -da. I got to seam this, the neck hole a little bit smaller. And then, of course, weave in all these tails. Weave in all these tails. Sure, you're tired of looking at my chest and my books, but that's how you do the. You go up and you go up one side, and then you go around and back down the other side to meet where you started. Well, where you met the sleeve, and then you chain one and then pull it through, and then you weave in your ends or your tails. Which I have one, two, three, four. How did I get that? Well, there's four tails. But that's it so far. Who is heavy? Who is heavy? And then I got to seam in the neck holes, which will be just like this sweater, this shirt. Seam it in a little bit to the cuff. Seam it in a little bit till you want the length that you want. And then you put a cuff around it. And then you put a cuff around the sleeves. And then you put a cuff around the bottom. And yeah, I'll show you that when we get to it. But thanks for watching still, if you're still watching. <laughs> we will transition to the next step, which is 
you get how to seam together. We're going to seam together the cuff and then make the cuff. Well, seam together the neck hole to make it smaller and more neck appropriate. And then I'm going to put a ridge or a cuff or a ruffle, whatever you want to call it. Collar? A collar. That's the word. <laughs> a collar around the sleeve, the neck hole. And then a cuff around the sleeve holes. <laughs> and then a collar or a cuff around the, the bottom hole. The, the torso hole. Alright. This is long enough. Alright, to do the bottom cuff, or any cuff actually, you just attach your yarn wherever you feel like attaching your yarn. I like to attach my yarn in the seams, that way the seams match up. But you put your hook through, put your yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through again, and then chain one. Oh, which is what I just did, which you can't see. But chain one to secure it, and then chain one again to double secure it, and then proceed to evenly space your single crochets around. Oops, that's not a single. Your single crochets evenly around the base of the sweater. -ta -ta -ta. In this case. Hmm, I'm off. I have a visitor again. <laughs> but yeah. Evenly around the base of the sweater so you have something good and solid to secure the cuff to. Or easier, it's easier to work the cuff when you have a solid base from which to work the cuff. Instead of having to struggle with placement you already have the base of single crochets and as you can see they kind of just like disappear <laughs> but I've already done the collar see nice and smooth and even I've already done the sleeves Nice and smooth and even. And this sweater is just so nice. I might make one for myself. And I've already done the other sleeve. So all that's left to do is the base. <sighs> Slide to the right. And then, after that, we'll proceed to work. My cousin chose the bright, vivid white color. And then the... Where'd the black go? The black. Beautiful black to make whoop, the cuff. I'm going to do alternating ribs of wide bands. And I'll show you later when I get there what that's going to look like. But basically, you're going to take the band attach it and chain up as many as you feel comfortable with and then chain down or add a chain and then chain down like this you're gonna go up up and down up and down up and down up and down and up and down until you get the color band as white as you want it to be and then you're gonna switch colors because we're alternating black and white and then when you're done with that you're going to go around the top again in a red and like outline everything in red. All right. Thanks for watching. Stay crafty and don't forget to continue to watch. If you see. All right. To start the cuff around the sleeve, I'm just going to demonstrate one sleeve and that's it. We attach the yarn. Oh. 
and then chain one to secure. Uh -oh. Make sure everything is nice and tight. Get it right, get it right, get it tight. And then you gotta chain up. Oh, this is frustrating. You gotta chain up however long you want your cuff to be. And then add one. Two, three, four, four, five, six. So I'm going six chains up. Then I'm going to add one just because you got to turn. And then I'm going to go in that second chain from the hook, which is hard to see with this velvety yarn, but trust me, it's there. And then you just go back down the chain. It's off the screen. <laughs> And then if I remember correctly, you still add to the chain, and then you go in the base. Nope, you go one out from the base, and then you chain, well, you crochet into the The next loop up because that'll count as a chain and that is only all it'll count for and then you kind of flip your work eh, the reds bleeding into the white <laughs> and then you chain no you don't chain you just go back up the chain Three, four, four. I like to change my tails in as I go and even though I know it makes it look a little sloppy because the red bleeds into the white I don't care as long as my tail doesn't come undone ever <laughs> five Five, six, and then chain one. Now I'm not going in the back loops. I'm just going in the, I should be going in the back loops only.
Yeah. Or the front loops only. I'm trying to get this established first. I can also front post it or back post it. But I'm just single crocheting so it's going to be hard to post around a single crochet with this yarn. But that's the gist of it. And then you have your little nubby cuff. And then to change yarns, let me do a few more rows. This time I'm going to do the back loop. kind of hard to see with this fuzz but you see what it did it kind of made a little ridge right along there I'm gonna keep doing that in the back loops only chain one which doesn't count as anything and then go back down Working in the back loops only. Oops, I'm off camera. I'm sorry. And then to change colors, you don't finish your stitch. You leave the two loops on there. And then you grab your new color. Uh, and then you grab the tail. And then you work it, grab the tail, grab it with the hook, and then you pull it through to finish the stitch, and then you pull tight your other color. Then proceed to carry on with your work, working in the back loops only. This is going to be frustrating. I should make him pay extra for the frustration fee. <laughs> yeah. Your turn. And back loops only. Oh, I did it.
doesn't help that the sweater's so long it tugs everything out of your hands, too. <laughs> There's that. And then we go back to doing what we were doing before. Working in the back. Ooh, this is hard to see. <laughs> yes, the frustration of free should be applied. In the back loops only. Now I'm switching back again because I don't want my colors to have the tails. I don't know. I'm going to have to go back and reattach at the top. Because that's where I wanted my colors to, to trail along, not at the bottom of the sleeve. Because I can hide them. If I leave them to trail along at the top, I can hide them when I go back around with the uh, the red layer. The red single crochets across the top to even up this edge. But I'm going to have to reattach that. Or I could do it like that. Where I crochet over the the tail and carry it along. Hello. <laughs> Although for you it won't be long, but for me it's been weeks. <sighs> I've decided to switch the. Uh, yeah, as you can see, I went from up and down bars to side. What do you call them? Rings. That's what it's called. And to do the rings, you just attach and go around. And then you switch colors whenever you're done with one color and continue on. Like I did with these, tucking in your strings as you go. Because I showed him the way I was doing, which was up and down bars instead of rings. He said, nah, I want rings. I was like, okay, I got you. <laughs> but yeah, that's how you make it. And then you make them as thick as you want, like I'm doing here. This is going to be way thicker because it's the bottom. Or you can make them as thin as you want, like right here. That's just one row of single crochet and then a double crochet, a single crochet and a double crochet, and then a single crochet of red to edge it up. But this is one row of single crochet around and then a row of double crochet and then I think I'm gonna have to double crochet again and like two rows of double crochet instead of one row of single crochet one row of double crochet but it's your sweater you make it how you want it <laughs> and that's how you do it maybe I'll put in clips of the uh, finished product but right now it's not finished so I can't put them in But anyways, <laughs> thanks for watching the video and I hope this helped you make a corner to corner crochet sweater with sleeves and a, and a cuffs and a bottom cuff and a big old thick collar. But yeah, thanks.